Hi friends, Mrs. Harris here. Our I Can statement for today is, I can create a pop art sandwich with different foods that represent who I am. We're going to be creating another indirect self-portrait, where we take ideas that represent who we are, except this time we're going to be taking food. Pop art breaks away from the traditional fine art styles by including imagery from popular mass culture, like Andy Warhol's Campbell's Soup Cans, like Roy Lichtenstein's, his cartoons. Keith Haring is one of my favorite. Did you know right here in Michigan we have a Keith Haring sculpture? That's right. That's Mrs. Harris standing in front of it. It's in Grand Rapids, Michigan in the Frederick Meyer Sculpture Garden. If you get time, you need to go there. It's only about an hour and 45 minutes from our little town of Pinckney. Now the artist I really want to look at, Klaus Olenberg. This shovel that you see is also in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Frederick Meyer Sculpture Garden. It stands 23 feet tall. Klaus Olenberg is a Swedish-born American sculptor, best known for his oversized sculpture of everyday objects. A lot of times he takes small items and makes you really think about them. This artist right here is clearly influenced by Klaus Olenberg. Now you need to think about all the food that's going to represent you the best way, your favorite food. How are you going to represent it? A whole pizza or a slice of pizza? We will be using simple line drawings to create our food. But with this, we need to make sure we have enough information so our viewer knows exactly what they're looking at. We need to make things look like they are draping on top of each other. We also need to overlap. We are not stacking food in our sandwich. Things to think about while you're drawing your sandwich. Draw big, make these items big. Lines off the paper, overlap objects, light pressure because you're going to be doing a lot of erasing and blend your colors. Don't just color solid, use the colors together. When we're doing our dream sandwich and I, you guys start to draw your food, I want you to think about things, simple shapes. If you think about a piece of pizza, yes, it looks like a triangle, but that is so simple. What I want you to do is make the pizza look a little bit more dimensional. Let it look like it's kind of falling. All right, and then you're gonna kind of raise up your crust. And again, this takes just a little bit more effort to do something like this to make it look a little bit more realistic. When you add pepperonis on there, just don't put your circles. Let there be half circles, like they, you know, it's been cut. So again, taking it from this to this. If you're drawing a can, we know that the top of it is a circle, but we don't want to see it as a circle. We want to see more of an oval. When you come down, it also needs to have this same line needs to be mimicked down here. If you draw the line straight across, it looks like it closes it. Everything can be drawn with simple shapes. We know this shape, and we know this shape, and we know this shape. You put those shapes together and you can real easily get yourself a leg of chicken, okay? So when you are stumped, really kind of come up with it and think about what simple shapes you see. One thing that happens that I don't want to see is this plate is not created an oval because we're looking at it from an angle. It shouldn't be so circular. All these items are stacked. There's not a lot of detail. Soup, okay, what kind of soup? Um, this cookie, obviously when you added color to it, it's gonna be a little bit more understandable what it is. So it needs to look more like this, where we've got things stacked. You can see, I, you can't see the entire fish, an ice cream sandwich, a piece of pizza. This is gonna be a bag of chips. I didn't finish writing that on there. There's my chicken bone, chocolate chip cookie, and a can of green beans. Now, when we go to add color to these things, we're not just coloring this in. If this is cheese, I'm not just gonna color it in yellow because that's not really what cheese looks like. I'm gonna add a little bit of red because there's gonna be a little bit of sauce coming through. And I'm also gonna go through and add a little bit of brown because it's going to get cooked and sometimes your cheese comes out brown. And again, remember when you're working with colored pencils, layering things is the way to do it. Always go back with the color that you wanted it to be. I might need more of a different yellow to kind of help make this look a little bit more believable. But we'll be adding color with this with either colored pencil or crayon, not marker. And again, I want you guys to layer it. The only things that are gonna stay white are areas perhaps maybe like, what color is this? It's dark brown where the 
ice cream sandwich is white. This is a better brown. So this is going to be my sandwich cake part on the outside. And again, that can stay white. Or you could do it a Neapolitan ice cream. That might be kind of fun. But again, this is a self-portrait. You're gonna put foods and things that are important to you. I would like to see at least nine different foods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I don't have nine, but I'd like nine from you guys. And I, it should reach the top and the bottom of the page. And do not draw little. Things to think about. Do not draw little. Let your lines go off the paper. Overlapping is important because again, we're trying to create that illusion of depth within our drawings. Colored pencils work best if you layer them. They're not about coloring solid like a crayon. If you want to do that, use a crayon. We'll end up cutting this out and attaching it to a piece of colored paper for a matte finish. So again, when we cut it out, it'll be our traditional bubble cut where I would come right around here and my cut would look just like that. I'm gonna move in and out. Have fun with this.